motorcycle racing fans, it's time for the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimura. The anticipation, the thrill, the beginning, says AMA Pro Racing in their latest press release, slating a fast approaching round one of AMA Pro Flat Track. Set to take place at the World Center of Racing March 10th and 11th, the twin short track races will set the tone for the 2016 season, and if it's anything like 2015, it's sure to be an exciting one. Check out amaproracing.com for more information. Also taking place that weekend, one of the most historic motorcycle races ever. The 75th running of the Daytona 200 will be sanctioned by ASRA for the second year in a row. In keeping with the tradition, the 57 lap, 200 mile race will be fitted with a competitive purse and even a Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. In addition to the 200, ASRA and CCS will have a stacked schedule of races Thursday through Sunday. For more information, visit asraracing.com. Testing season is in full swing. The 2006 MotoGP World Champion turned World Superbike racer, Nicky Hayden, was recently testing his Honda. After a successful test for Nicky and his new team last year at Jerez, Nicky posted several pictures of him on his new steed at Phillips Island as the series sets to kick off its 2016 season this weekend. Nicky was fifth overall in the test at the end of day two with Jonathan Ray on top. Several of Moto America's top teams tested for the third time last weekend at Thunder Hill Raceway Park in a final test before the official test taking place at Circuit of the Americas later in March. Yoshimura Suzuki, Monster Energy Graves Yamaha Factory Racing, Meme Motorsports, Yamaha Extended Service Graves Yamaha, and Lattice Motors Racing Kawasaki were all in attendance. The test saw cold, windy, and at some points wet conditions, but overall was a success for most of the riders, like Meme Motorsports' Joe Roberts. We have a quick clip of Moto America's Paul Carruthers getting word with the 2015 Vizaz Super Stock 600 champ. Watch this. We're here with Joe Roberts at Thunder Hill Raceway Park. We're sort of in a delay now because of uh, the track's a little bit wet. Joe, you, you, you got to ride yesterday and uh, rumor on the street is that you, uh, you put in some pretty good lap times. Yeah, not too bad considering the wind and everything. It was... Uh... It was really good you know I, I I think I put down the fastest 600 time and uh, I made sure I rubbed it into Garrett and JD <laughs> you seem you seem you seem to be ever confident um, and ready for the coming years your preparation been going as well as you'd want it to yeah you know I I want to be doing more testing we haven't been able to test this is the first time we've tested this year um, I think we're gonna be doing more testing a little a little more testing now but uh, the bike is, you know, we switched suspension, went back to Olin's, uh, so that's something to get used to again. And I mean, it's a it's a Yamaha R6, so it's it's gonna feel great as always, you know. Uh, but so I I don't know, I'm just loving riding this bike. You know, I I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm like consistently being able to go out and just do my thing on it, and uh, and put down really fast times and. It's, it would kind of have a good baseline setting now where I can just go out and yeah go for it and not when, be worried. Is your goal when you come to these things is do you like to set fast time and kind of make those guys think a little bit? Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta be the fastest guy. If you're not, you know you you want to give them get them worried. You gotta start you know showing that you're the best. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> well, so far, and, and you've been doing some dirt tracking. Is that? I mean, obviously, you think that helps helps your road racing. Yeah, no, I have been doing a lot of dirt tracking, and that is, you know, I got uh, a new Yamaha 450, and we got some suspension done for it. And you know, the funny thing with dirt track is, like, I always would go out and I just like be chasing the bike and couldn't get the setup. And I get mad at it, I get pissed off. But now I've just decided to stick to one tire and like just go to one track <laughs> that I'm fast at. And then that and then I feel confident with dirt track. <laughs> so I go to Paris Raceway and just ride there and I have my setup and my tires and uh, and I can put down good fast laps. So yeah, it's 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 fun, you know, it's it's good training and everything, you know, it teaches you a lot about throttle control and how to get out of a corner and how to get traction and um, 
And it's also just a really good fun to mess around with riders. You know, I went out with Nikki Hayden and uh, Jared Mees and everybody, and that was uh, that was fun. You know, r mixing it up with them. Was that a little eye opening? Yeah, kind of. I mean, or you're probably faster than them already. Yeah, you know, no, <laughs> no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, they're they're really fast. You know, so the thing with the thing with like Nikki is that he's just so consistent. You know, he can put down laps after laps you know just constant just constant fast laps and I think he he got behind me and he was just kind of sitting there and you know laps would go on laps would go on and then he just getting closer and closer and closer and then my arms are just pumping up I'm like, I can't I can't freaking keep going and he could go all day he could go all day so I think that shows how fit he is and something I definitely want to get to you know and um but, but he's, it was really cool watching him ride, you know. I've never seen him dirt track in person before, so it was cool. And thank you, Moto America, for the video. For all your Moto America news straight from the source, visit MotoAmerica.com. We'll be right back after this commercial break with this week's Product Spotlight. Hello. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left. And like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. On this week's show, we have the fastest girl on a 600, Patricia Fernandez, calling from Phillips Island to talk about her adventure down under. But first, let's go to John Boucher for this week's Product Spotlight. In this week's Product Spotlight, we're bringing you not one, but two covers out of Massachusetts, USA. And we're talking about the stator cover and the ignition trigger cover from Woodcraft. First, it's the LHS stator cover for a Kawasaki ZX-10R 2011 through 16. This is the two-piece engine cover that is designed to protect your bike while at the same time give you a custom look. Woodcraft covers are CNC machined from 6061 aluminum billet, which has exceptional strength and it's lightweight. This one weighs in at one pound and two ounces. Look at how these engine covers have held up after a crash. Woodcraft has the patented replaceable skid plates that bolts from the inside. This way you don't have to worry about trying to remove bolts with the heads ground off. Now these skid plates are gonna come in a number of different colors and this stator cover is gonna run right around that 220 mark. Next up is the ignition trigger cover for the ZX-10R. Like the stator cover, it has a two-piece patented skid plate replacement system. Look at how thick the walls of this cover are and it only weighs 11 ounces. What I really like about both these covers is that they come with additional skid plates, screws, and a gasket. So everything you need in one box. Now this Woodcraft ignition trigger cover is gonna come in around that 150 mark. And it's a product that has been tested by the man himself, Eric Wood. There he is. Eric and the team over there at Woodcraft uh, have tested these things in-house and on the track. They are a group of racers and they're making products for racers. So if you want to check out more things from Woodcraft, it's woodcraft-cfm.com. That's the stator cover and the ignition cover, and that's this week's Product Spotlight. Don't go away, we've got Patricia Fernandez on the line right after this commercial break.
back and from a college student commuting to and from school on her motorcycle just a few years ago to an international racer, she's making her professional super bike debut on her ADR Motorsports GSX-R1000 in the opening round of the Australian Superbike Series. All the way from down under, it's Patricia Fernandez. Patricia, welcome. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And it's not quite the entrance you made last time you were here on your own <laughs> private plane, but in true uh, Patricia fashion, you're joining us from somewhere spectacular. Tell us about it. Yeah, I'm here at Phillip Island, in Australia. It's beautiful and sunny. i um, been here for a few weeks and hanging out for the opening round of Australian Superbike combined with World Superbike. And I was able to test and then had about 10, 12 days off in between. So I just decided to stay and been enjoying the weather and the good, the koalas and all the kangaroos and everything. Right, and tell us what's behind you. Uh, behind me actually is the bridge to go into Phillip Island. Um, it's actually, Phillip Island isn't very big. You can get anywhere in about 10 minutes. And um, that's a little bridge to the mainland that you can get to. But um, I had to go somewhere to get some pretty good Wi-Fi to talk to you guys with the site. So it's not like I could actually sit on the beach. <laughs> very and cool. Talk to you. But um, it's a, a pretty awesome little town tons of little stuff going on and there's a little pier and everything so it's it's really fun to be here lots to do and we'll get to all the things you have been doing here in just a second but let's get right to it uh you're about to make your australian superbike debut on a 1000 talk about this opportunity that you've got uh well this is amazing all this was brought on um, by david anthony you know he races superbike but he's also the team owner of adr motorsports who you know i race for for moto america back home and uh, we were chit-chatting a little bit last year, and um, he was like, what do you think about, you know, doing a round over in Australia? And originally, we were going to try to come in October with MotoGP, but that was um, the same weekend as the Daytona Race of Champions, which we decided to do that instead. So we had an opportunity to come out here, and originally, I was going to be on a 600. You know, that's what I race, and that's what I'm comfortable on. And Dave kind of was poking the bear a little bit, and he was like, why don't you race a 1,000? You know you want to do it at some point. So... It was worded a little differently than that. That's the nice way I'm going to say it. But um, so we just decided to go for it. And, you know, I talked to him and I was like, do you really think I can do it? You know, clearly I trust him. He's my team owner and he, a friend and he thought I could. And so we came out and um, we were able to do two track days, the 11th and 12th uh, last week. And I respected the bike. You know, it's a lot more than I'm used to at home. And I've never been on the track, never been on a motorcycle, never, a 1000, never raced on the Pirelli tires that we have. And. So I just respected the bike that I had and the power and I went out there and it's got better and better every single lap and I'm well within qualifying time by over five seconds and I'm definitely going to go faster and it's just, I can't believe it's really happening. I just really can't. It's pretty exciting, but a lot of the reasoning that we're um, getting on a 1000 and trying to do a couple pro races on it is I want, really want to be first female to ever compete at Macau, which Macau only races 1000. So I'm going to do... A few more races hopefully this year on the on the super bike but um i don't even know what to say it's all You're really exciting so I exciting isn't it right so uh yeah. we'll just really quick wrap that up that that you went to race macau last year but they wouldn't let you because you didn't technically have your superbike license. So like you said, that's why you're getting on the thousand this year. So it's a huge platform for you. New bike, new tires, new track, new country, like you said, all this new stuff. What's the pressure? I mean, you're going into a weekend that's also uh, that's a support race for World Superbike. So talk about being on this huge platform with this opportunity. I mean, I'm thankful that, you know, obviously pro racing back home, I've done support races before with MotoGP and World Superbike. So I understand that, you know, a lot of our time gets cut down. So every minute, every lap, everything is so much more valuable than it would be if a regular race weekend where you get 50 minute sessions, a couple of them, you know, we don't get much time at all. But um, one of the big things for me coming was talking to Dave was I had to be able to do a track day before I had to be able to get comfortable at least to learn the bike and learn the track and I had those two track days and you know I was really nervous I'm not gonna lie like my hands were all sweating and I was I was freaking out before I got on the bike not that I wasn't confident but it's just you know a lot a lot of pressure to put on somebody but by the end of the first day I was just I mean I couldn't describe to you how big the smile was underneath in my helmet it was pretty amazing and I never been that fast on a motorcycle and it was great like i had to tell myself to look up because i mean phillip island's an extremely fast track anyways but seeing all the paint move and everything just faster than i'm used to you know it, it was great but by day two looking at my times and just how i felt on the bike itself you know i bumped up my physical fitness training and um my riding over the winter big time to prepare for this and i was confident to be quite honest after doing those two days i was really nervous before but now 
I really am 100% confident going into the weekend. I know that I'm going to qualify. I know I'm going to do well. I know I'm going to actually be very competitive. Um, from what they tell me, there's only 40 spots that they allow in the Superbike race, and there'll be more than that try attempting to qualify. But my times where I'm at right now, not even at a race pace, is well under over five seconds under what qualifying time would be. So I'm I'm good. I'm confident that there's going to be some pretty good battles going on. As you should be confident. But let's talk about it real quick. We were laughing before we got this interview going about the track day scenario that went down. Tell us a little bit about that. There's not a lot of girls that race out there in the world in general, but out there, they were actually kind of surprised that you signed up for the racer class at the track day. Talk about it. Yeah. Um, so I signed up obviously for the race group for registration and they had stopped me and they informed me that I signed up for the race group and they thought I signed up for the, the wrong group. And I had to tell them that no, that I was a racer and I was here to race super bikes and they were pretty shocked. Um, there's not many female competitors out here. I will be the only female competing in the super bike series and the super bike class. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely at the beginning of the day, clearly I was slower, never been there, never been on the bike or anything. And there was a lot of people passing me without a problems, but by the end, like I was passing so many people. I had a lot of locals coming out to me because it was only my first time and I was beating their time significantly. And uh, I could tell that some of the guys are getting a little upset because some of the passing maneuvers that they were using were a little desperate or just a little, they didn't like it very much. You could tell and um, poor Dave and me were talking and we probably shouldn't have worn the neon pink leathers. You can't hide that I'm a girl on the super bike and the neon pink leathers, but uh, I just don't think that they're they're used to it, you know, but um, they're gonna have to get used to it because I'm only gonna go faster in that race. And so uh, it, <laughs> it'll be fun. No one was uh, rude, but I just definitely don't think the guys are used to the girls beating them. I'm sure they're not. And they actually did try to get you to hide that you're a girl and got you to tuck your ponytail in to your helmet. Yeah. They can't get you to hide all that hair. Are they kidding me? But good for yeah. you. We're really proud of you over here and we know you'll represent us well. Uh, you're hopefully on track to be the fastest girl on 1,000 as you're the fastest girl on a 600 right now. But I want to talk about yeah. your training program leading up to this. You've got this great support group rallying behind you. Colin Edwards, yeah. you've spent some time at boot camp. You got Jason Pridmore with Star School. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't be more thankful for all the guys. One of the big things we concentrated on on the off season was Normally, you know, once the last pro race is, round, uh, is over, I might race one time or, or ride one or two times maybe over the offseason before pro series starts again. So I really don't train much where that's a big disadvantage for me, where a lot of other riders, you know, they get to train, whether it's, you know, track days, club races, dirt bike stuff. So we really put a program together, a regimen where I would stay on top of not just my physical fitness, but my riding as well, especially coming up to my first race of this year as being on a super bike. And you know, Jason Pridmore, Jason Pridmore Star School is my coach and he's phenomenal. And uh, I went to Colin Edwards boot camp a few times and, you know, went out to Chepwalla and rode a bunch. But even here, like, <laughs> you know, uh, JP is definitely a big part of my riding, a big tool. So I'm here and doing the track days, you know, texting him constantly and calling him. And I know the time zones are a little different. So unfortunately, I think I wake him up <laughs> a lot. But He's, he's been great and um, helping me out. It's it's really good knowing like Colin and JP and all these other guys that are supporting me. You know, they've all been here and they've raced here so I can text and talk to them. And obviously having Dave Anthony here, you know, he's a team owner, but he's also a competitor. He's a racer. So he's been to the circuit as well. I definitely have the best of the best helping me and um, giving me, even though they're not here, they are in spirit and texting me and supporting me. And even just hearing from my mom and my family and social media, you know, it's, it's a big help to my confidence and not feeling alone in a country that I've never been to at a racetrack I've never been to but um, there's so much support you know coming from all my fans and family and obviously all my sponsors that it it really helps with the confidence factor knowing I just have so many people cheering me on and it's nice it doesn't make you feel alone when you're in a, a foreign country but um, I, I definitely have to be thankful for all those that are gonna help me go fast this weekend. Well, you look like you're doing fine. You got a nice tan going on, blue skies behind you. Uh, Ozzy Dave, your team owner, pulling double duty again this year, racing as well. So let's talk about the rest of 2016 for you. What's on the schedule? Well, definitely competing in the Moto America Superstock 600 Series again on my Yamaha my ADR R6. Um, I'm also going to be doing more road racing over in Ireland, the Ulster GP again, the world's fastest road race for sure. I'm trying to get to the Isle of Man, Manx GP, and hopefully Macau. You know, there's a few opportunities that I got. Um, a couple people approached me about racing Pikes Peak or a few other um, events and venues, but unfortunately some of them clash with the Moto America series, which is where my commitment mainly is at this point. Um, you know, but just getting on the bike and ride as much as possible, the 
my performance so far on the 1000 has been really good and I had definitely going to be doing some more races on that. Um, probably just club racing for right now and then maybe some of the road racing until next season but um you know depending on how it goes and how well it is you might be seeing me on a super bike next year or a super stock 1000. awesome we hope to see that patricia we know you're right on course uh to do great things including getting on a thousand next year maybe here in moto america so now we covered the business let's talk about the fun stuff you've been doing over there you've had plenty of time you've been there for over three weeks now talk about some of the things you've been getting into oh man Number one on my priority list was definitely just to see and touch animals. I got to pet and feed kangaroos, which I was actually like a little kid. I was pretty enthusiastic about that. But I'm pretty thankful that I've had some awesome hosts that have been showing me around and doing some cool stuff. I spent some time in Melbourne and got to do some cool city stuff and going to the zoos and koalas and kangaroos and echidnas and mountain biking and rock climbing. I've been doing surfing and going to the beach and um I mean, I've been running every day, keeping up with my physical fitness, but it's kind of cool that I get to run along the beach side at Phillip Island. It's pretty awesome. Um, I got to pet a penguin. I was actually <laughs> really excited about that. Um, I love animals, clearly. But, you know, just a lot of the city sites and the beautiful views that are here. I mean, Australia is huge. You know, I, hopefully when I come back again, I'll get to see some of the Gold Coast and the Great Barrier Reef, some of the stuff I didn't get to do this time. But I've just really just been enjoying the outdoor life. I got to go hiking up some of the mountains and in the bush, the Aussie bush, <laughs> which was quite an experience. But I just, you know, it's just beautiful and sunny and everything here is different and I love it. It's a lot of fun. Went and shot some guns, but um, I have to say every day I've just been taking advantage of being here. Soak it all in, Patricia. We are jealous. It's pouring down rain here in Tennessee. So soak it all in. Enjoy it while you're there. Um, we're going to be following you and we're going to find out how we can follow you and get that out to the fans. But we want to wish you the best of luck over there. We know you'll represent uh, our series very well, especially as a female. You're a great ambassador, not only for the sport, but for females. And we know you'll do well over there. And we can't wait to see how it, how it ends up for you. Uh, thanks, Danielle. I really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for having me on the show again. And I can't wait to give everyone some pretty awesome updates. About yes, this. great. Well, we'll be following you. You can follow her on Instagram at lady underscore racer 926. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. All right, great. Follow her for great pictures over there. And we'll be following you to see how well you do over there, Patricia. Good luck. Thanks, Danielle. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. Uh, don't have to worry about it overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Coolant. Got to have the best to go fast. I'd like to thank our guest Patricia Fernandez for waking up bright and early just for us. Be sure to follow her on her adventure on social media and for great pics on her Instagram at lady underscore racer 926. Speaking of, join the over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each Friday along with product spotlights and the latest issue of the digital magazine. Round two of Moto America Road Atlanta tickets are on sale. Don't be a DNF, a do nothing fan. Be a proactive fan and attend races this season. Road Atlanta is one of my favorite tracks to attend and we'll be there for sure. For dates and events in your area, check out the calendar at MotoAmerica.com. On behalf of myself and John Boucher, thanks for tuning in. And for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion.
Motorcycle racing fans, this is American Idol. Did you get it? Are we good?